It's a very irresponsible uh, uh, statement for a minister of justice to to make. Divorce is a right provided by law, and he should know that better than anyone else. Uh, he's the keeper of the law, uh, and uh, and uh, you know what he is saying is that he's blaming everything on divorce. That society encourages it. From our experience, we do know it's very difficult. It's a profound decision, particularly women make. This country has one of the highest rates of violence against women, intimate partner violence. Women die. In the last 10 years, over 54 women have died at the hands of their husbands and partners and loved ones who they live with. And they have died because it's so difficult for them to leave. And it's very when those divorces happen, but it's all right. Everyone can exercise that right. And if they want to run, go away, get away from a violent situation, it is their right to do so. But it's very profound. It's a very profound decision they make. And there's a lot of thinking around it, doing and fro and so on. In Fiji, over the years, in our 40 years of experience, and from various uh, research and surveys that have been carried out, uh, in, 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 from various institutions, we have found that the two main reasons now we have fault-based uh, divorce uh, no longer have that. But two main reasons why women uh, um, uh, leave uh, or where divorces occur is, or if women are instigating it, or if women are uh, are, are are the ones who are. Uh, wanting a divorce, the two main reasons have been the violence that that's perpetrated against them in their own homes and infidelity. And mostly because we live in a patriarchal uh, society, mostly on the side of the men. And where men have themselves divorced women they no longer want, and they have found other women and they are moving on. And in some cases, of course, a small percentage of women who have uh, you know, moved on uh, and so on. Uh, and nowadays, divorces are also based on incompatibility um, and other forms of violence, financial violence, and so on. So, you know, so by say, saying that, because women find it so difficult to leave, and you know, and they're to and fro for so long, it's like really dangerous for him to say that because a lot of women now will rethink what the Minister of Justice is saying and they will take it upon themselves that they are to be blamed for the divorces and so on if they decide to leave. So they will remain in those horrible relationships, you know, that perhaps the minister doesn't know what women go through and maybe he needs to come and visit the crisis center and find out exactly what women go through, you know, as, as, and, and that's I'm talking about, uh, you know, 64% of women in this country have experienced domestic violence, or experienced domestic violence on a regular basis. The last prevalence studies shows that. So I would really, and, and you know, and where, where is the data about divorces causing the intake of drugs, people becoming, taking drugs and all other social issues and so on? Yes, a lot of social issues do come from families where there is a lot of violence, where, which are families that are dysfunctional and so on. So we need to look at the family unit. We need to look at reasons why people are leaving, why people don't want to remain married and so on. We need to look at that. And our, whatever leaders say, it must come from a place of knowledge, information, hard evidence and so on. Because otherwise we'll be blaming everything else. If it's a drug problem, it comes back to the women, to divorces, to marriages. And this is not it. There are other issues also around here. When we're talking about drugs, there's so many people now coming up with family values, divorces. You know, it's so quick to get divorces, blaming everything else. But looking at where is the root of all of this. One is, of course, why people are taking drugs and where are they taking from. I find the ones that are pushing the real culprits are not being looked at because there has been so much corruption in this country. And, and you know, even looking at our police force and everywhere else where... These drug lords or, or the drug pushers have gotten away with it over and over again because there are people involved in the drug trade with them. There's a lot of corruption around this. So we need to root those things out and look at that thing also. And we have to look at every problem holistically. We can't just be on one or the other just because the whim hits us at that point in time and just because we don't like uh, we want the family, we all want the family units to be together. But what kind of family do we want? We want a family where there is peace, 
where there is no violence, where there is respect, there is equality, and there's respect for everybody, for the whole, uh, the whole family unit, for each other, whether they're young or old, whether they're men or women, whoever they are. And that's what we should be looking at, rather than just blaming everything wholesale on divorces, or people leaving, and so on. So, really, you know, uh, our leaders really should, when they open their mouths, because people are looking at them, and already we have a very um, difficult area, violence against women, ge promoting gender equality, equity, and so on, and giving women their rights. You know, over and over again we hear uh, our leaders talking about women's rights, about women's place, and about uh, women participating in economic activity, in the leadership, and so on. The mouth says something else, but the actions are very, very different. And every now and then, and it's getting quite often now, and when we go into the communities, we are also told what the women are being told, where leaders are coming there and telling them that it's all their fault and they need to behave themselves and uh, respect their culture and tradition and so on, and everything will be hunky-dory. So we really encourage our leaders to please, when you open your mouth, say something sensible, something based on evidence. And that's what we're asking. Because for us, it's been over 40 years of the crisis center's existence. And it's just so difficult to work in this area. Every day we are faced with a new challenge. And at the moment, drug is one of them. The other one is climate change, relocations, and how it impacts on women, how it impacts on gender equality, and so on, how uh, a drug impacts on violence against women and girls, and so on. We're dealing with all these things. So I think instead of you know just haphazardly pulling something out of the hat because the whimsy hits you right at, the, at that point in time, at your whim to do that, let us all get together, all the different stakeholders. There is no quick fix to this. We must be, you know, be together on this and, and singing from the same page, you know, and not from all over the place. So uh, my, you know, I implore the Minister for Justice to find out more about violence against women, the causes of divorces from his own courts, and then let's look for solutions. And, and, you know, and, and the other thing that I really encourage is for our leaders, and we've been saying this for years and years, uh, that all parliamentarians, all our leaders, traditional leaders, religious leaders, political leaders, whether they are men or women, they all must go through gender awareness, looking at power relations within our society. If we are serving all our people, men, women, girls and boys and everyone else in all their diversities, then we have to undergo this so to have a better understanding. So when we open our mouths, we do not do harm. You know, the, the whole thing is do no more harm that we do something that is effective and we open our mouths, that it is coming from a place of evidence and knowledge and understanding of gender dynamics in our society.